the two-class system has, ha have, uh, has existed for many years because most people living in developing countries never could afford these medicines. And we've learned that lesson in a very hard way in the early days of, uh, of the HIV AIDS uh, epidemic. And so we have lived this situation of a two-class system for many years, uh, but I don't think we considered it uh, in that way because it was people in developing countries and we didn't see that here. Now we, we're at the heart of the system, it doesn't work anymore for us. And that has changed the dynamics because now also uh, countries like here in Switzerland or other European countries, uh, certainly those that have a, a public health system uh, with universal health coverage, they can no longer afford all these new medicines at, a, at the prices that are being made available. And so you have a questioning of what is the balance between the public interest and the private uh, interest, because of course we know that pharmaceutical companies play an important role in developing new treatments for the medical needs we have, but do we have that balance right? Excessive pricing actually costs lives. We can no longer continue to uh, prioritize economic interest over uh, health. I think the, the a key structural reason is that we have given, as a society, uh, a lot of power to the pharmaceutical companies to decide which medicines they are going to develop and price them at any price that they think they can get away with. The thing is that pharmaceutical companies are multinationals. There is no international government system that can regulate pharmaceutical companies on pricing. Pricing happens at the national level, so there is a, a total imbalance between the global pharmaceutical power and then a government or a, a clinic needing to buy the medicines. It's an uh, unjust uh, system where, of course, you want to pay for your life and you're being taken, taken advantage of. Governments of, of countries where there is a strong presence of the pharmaceutical industry tend to prioritize the economic interest over the health interest of certainly people in developing countries, as we have learned over the years, but even today uh, their own uh, populations. And, and so uh, what we know is that there is very strong lobby against any action that would limit the monopoly power, both in terms of pricing and in terms of uh, being the only producer of certain, certain drugs. And Switzerland have, uh, being uh, the host of a number of uh, big pharmaceutical companies is, is uh, one of those. It would be nice if the Swiss government would stop pressuring other governments uh, on <coughs> behalf of basically their pharmaceutical industry. And the compulsory license is basically, it's a plaster on a, on a sick system. But for now, until you can change the system, it is a very useful tool to actually create affordable access to the drugs we need uh, for the people. Given that the, the, your prominent position in, as a health actor uh, also towards developing countries, it could be a really fantastic example that would give courage to uh, developing countries uh, to not feel as threatened and not feel alone if a country like Switzerland would go uh, towards a compulsory license.